Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Sam, otherwise known as Sneerx from TikTok. And today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different that I have been talking about on TikTok and my Instagram, which is going to be reading your rant. So this is something completely out of the blue that I decided to do. I thought it would be cool for everyone to kind of let off some steam or just get something off their chest and I will read it here anonymously and just get it all out there, right? So without further ado, I had about 50 or so people submit their rants to me and I have not gone through them yet. I have not looked at them. So these are gonna be completely new to me as well. So I will give my take on the situation. I can give as much advice as I can if it calls for it. Now in watching this video, if you wanna send me your rant for the next time, I'll go ahead and leave the email address that I am receiving these rants for and you can send as many as you want. You can send them about any topic. However, just keep in mind that obviously I'm going to be keeping it as appropriate as possible, meaning that I'm not going to be talking about anything that includes discriminating against types of people or a specific person, nothing like that. Make sure that you like this video and you subscribe to me here and you're following me on all my other social medias. Let's rant. All right, so the first one I have here, they, they actually put their name in, so I'm gonna skip over that part. Why can no one do anything on Saturdays? Like Monday through Friday, people are working or doing school and whatever, but the minute Saturday hits, it's like another day of the week and not the start of the weekend. I understand Sundays because people are preparing for the work and school, week and church, but Saturdays, come on people. I think this is a really good point because when I was working, I felt like everybody always wanted to go out to dinner or go and do some sort of event during the week and after work or after school, I don't want to do anything. I just want to go home. And on Saturdays, I'm like, hey, I got nothing to do here. I'm free. I'm willing to be social today. And suddenly everyone is has disappeared. <laughs> I'm with you on this one. Next one. I am honestly so sick and tired of helping people. For as long as I can remember, I've been helping people with their problems, giving them advice. Growing up in a household where my parents were pastors, it was sort of just thrown at me. I was never asked if I wanted to. It was just all of a sudden people started coming over to me with their issues. I really don't mind much, but it's constantly people getting themselves into the same situations and then asking me to fix it. It can be so draining when I have two to three people every day coming to me for stuff. I don't wanna stop helping them, but at the same time, I know my mental health isn't where it should be and I don't think they're making it any better. And I feel like if I keep doing this, there'll come a point in time where I can't help in the way that they want me to and I'll lose everyone. I think this is something that a lot of people struggle with, especially people pleasers or just people that wanna help and people that feel empathy and compassion for other people and are good at problem solving and people know that especially if your role has always been this helper, right? So people almost are now expecting it from you and you feel like they're taking, taking, taking and never giving anything back to you to, to help you or your mental health. And when you're constantly giving, there's nothing left for yourself. And you even said, you know, it's potentially affecting your mental health. Maybe you don't have time to focus on your own mental health because you're solving everybody else's problem all the time. I know that this is so cliche, but that, that saying that is like, you can't pour from an empty glass is so true. If you're constantly pouring into everybody else's glass and giving them, giving, 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 giving. You'll have nothing left for yourself, even if it's just the energy to just engage in self-care or just talk yourself through your own mental health situation. Providing tools to other people to help themselves might be an important thing that maybe you can start doing if you want to continue helping people, of course. I used to work for a crisis hotline where people were asking for help, people were asking for advice. People were constantly giving me negative situations that they needed fixed or needed help with. And after a while, it became very hard for me to even be able to problem solve my own issues. So I completely hear what you're going through. Self-care could be not texting somebody back or turning off your phone if people are harassing you or saying no if somebody is like, hey, I need to talk to you. You can be like, hey, I can't talk right now, but the guidance counselor is available or hey, why don't you try talking to your mom or you know, whatever. And you don't have to do it every time. You know, if there's a time where you feel you're able to help, do it. But first of all, to expect this from you, no, 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 you, you do not have to do anything for anybody if you don't want to. And especially you said that these same people keep coming back with the same situations and you're fixing them for them. If you're constantly fixing their problems, they're never learning how to fix them by themselves, which is why I'm saying maybe giving them tools um, to learn how to do it on their own might be helpful. So that could be resources online that you found anybody else that is available. You can direct them towards them. And something that you need to remember is that if they don't 
if, if they get upset with you or they don't respect that, these aren't your friends. These are people that are using you because if you put up your boundaries and say, this is what I'm okay with and somebody doesn't respect that, you have your answer right there on whether or not you should keep helping them because why should you keep helping these people? Why should you keep sacrificing your mental health when they have absolutely no plans or compassion to hear where you're coming from. I get it, I really get it, and it's going to take some time, it's gonna take a lot of standing up for yourself, but I know you can do it because you sound like an amazing person, so I have all the faith in you, you got this. Last semester in high school, there was a girl who stole a single soap dispenser off the wall of every girl's bathroom in the school. No idea how she managed it. A couple months later, I met a girl from my school and we became friends. One day last week, she pulled me aside and showed me a photo on her phone. Not only were there <laughs> the dispensers, but there were like 15 more from other schools. After that, she never mentioned it again, and I'm so confused. <laughs> I knew exactly where that was going as soon as you said you made a new friend. That's really random, and maybe some people just have, like, just that urge to do something that nobody else knows about. You know, it's just kind of their secret little stash of soap dispensers. <laughs> I guess it could be worse, right? At least she's not stealing, like, computers, I guess. I don't know. I had a kid at my school. Everybody got a laptop, and he stole somebody else's laptop and tried to pawn it off and the pawn shop actually contacted the school letting them know they had the missing laptop and it, it was a whole thing so it happens but that's really random and really funny so i'm like a teenage girl recently i had stopped being friends with someone in january and they've been talking bad about me since then because they think i'm in the wrong for confronting them so like short story i had his Okay, this is all just one sentence, so I'm trying to like space it up. It's cool. I had this ex and we had just broken up and shortly after they got together. And obviously I didn't know until I was told about it by my ex. And so the girl kept lying that she had no idea and said, oh, well, I don't know what to tell you. Ooh. And I couldn't help but wonder why lie about it. Later on, after our friendship ended, she had been nonstop talking to me, stalking me, and saying lots of things to my friends, and I'm like, why? Because I've been leaving her alone. I haven't talked about her or said anything about her yet. She can't do the same for me. Days go by, and I find her flirting with my ex and everything. Obviously, we're not friends anymore, but it annoys me that she lied to me about having nothing to do with him. But they're over on TikTok having profile pictures of one another, another and in bios literally always being touchy with each other in front of me like if they want me to get jealous of something i'm not sure what i should do because they've been constantly dragging me into their stuff and getting me into trouble at school and now they're in all my classes for my last semester i'm not sure what i can do but that was my rant okay um that is a very annoying situation especially you said they're getting you in trouble at school it sounds like they have a whole thing going on and you could be right they're trying to make you jealous I don't know if maybe they don't know how to communicate with you, so they're just like being weird. Maybe they know that you're upset about it or maybe wouldn't like it, but then it kind of seems like you're not really trying to engage with them. So I think you're doing the right thing by trying to avoid them at all costs, not talking about them because this is just drama, like for no apparent reason. All right, moving on. Hi, so you actually posted my Saturday rant with my rich friend saying she isn't rich when she wears $15,000 necklaces. And she got into a huge argument with me even though she said she was spoiled just the day before. But she said I target her when she buys things and I'm not happy for her, but I try to be happy. It's just hard because I can't casually buy $250 Jordans like she can. She also showed me 12 hundred dollar Dior shoes and said they weren't that expensive and she wanted a new Apple watch because her series six had cracked but now she thinks I target her and she wants to keep her distance from me but she is my only super close friend in one classroom so now I'm going to be all alone and lonely and part of me feels bad but I also am annoyed at her because we fought on a group chat and she acted like everyone was on her side when really two of my friends were on my side and now we're kind of just in a big fight and she thinks I'm being disrespectful to her and her family because she thinks I have a problem with her buying what she wants but I'm also just kind of jealous because I can't afford a lot of stuff that she owns thank you for listening this is a really interesting one to me and I really like that you sent this in because from your perspective she seems like she's almost bragging or putting it in your face right that she has all this stuff or she's complaining that maybe she needs a new apple watch and you're just sitting here like hey I can't even afford one apple watch and you're complaining that you have to go get another you know whatever so this is kind of just an, an unfortunate situation where two people just aren't seeing eye to eye or they're not really able to relate to one another. So it sounds like your friend isn't really able to relate to your situation because she's like, this is 
all I know. This is what I've grew up with. This is what I've been given. I don't know any other way. And my problems seem significant to me, but to somebody else, these seem like really rich, luxurious problems, of course. But something to remember is that just because you can't necessarily relate to somebody's problems doesn't mean that they're not valid. That means that your concerns and your feelings are just as valid and she's not able to see that side of it either. So maybe, you know, I know you guys have had arguments about this and, you know, she's even pointed out that she's spoiled, but she may just be saying that as kind of a defense because if she maybe feels like she is being targeted for her money, she may just kind of be like, oh yeah, no, I know I'm spoiled. Like just kind of casually trying to ease the situation. I, you know, I'm not really sure. I can't speak for anybody, but just from an outsider's perspective and something as simple as money, especially when it's her parents' money, I'm assuming if you guys are still in school, she's she's not out there making millions of dollars on her, you know, on the weekend. So I think this is just something that you guys should put aside and maybe you guys can find something else that you can talk about and it doesn't ever include money and it doesn't ever include having to spend money. You could even be empathetic and be like, I can't even imagine. Like, I, yeah, that sucks. I can't even imagine because I know when I want to buy something and I can't afford it or I know when something of mine breaks, it's frustrating and I have to buy a new one. So maybe just finding those little things that you have in common with her might be able to help get through it and just be respectful of each other. You know, you're coming from different backgrounds and sometimes that's hard, but that doesn't mean that you guys can't still be friends. Okay, somebody said say sparkles so I know this was mine. Anyway, I was best friends with this boy for nine months. Then he ends our friendship. Now he's talking crap about me to everyone at school. I was also besties with another boy and we're super close and all that jazz. Then he ends our friendship as well. This second boy, let's call him Owen, has been texting me every so often to catch up. On Wednesday, March 19th, he texted me and asked if we could call. Owen had a spot in my heart even after everything, so I said yes. This boy tells me, I miss you so much. You seriously have no idea and you're always on my mind or, I seriously regret ending our friendship and you were and still are such an important part of my life. But he ended with, don't be getting your hopes up though. I'm not restarting anything. So basically he's messing with my emotions and is setting off my depression again, but he doesn't have literally any friends. I wonder why. The rant said that, not me. <laughs> and he's getting harassed by this psychotic girl at school. So I feel bad telling him to stop when talking to me because he clearly needs help. That's all. Wow, that's a really weird situation. So you're friends with somebody, they end your friendship. You're friends with another person, they end the friendship. And the second guy you notice doesn't have a lot of friends. And then he tries to tell you that he misses you, but doesn't want to be your friend. I don't know, that's, that's, that's an interesting scenario, especially without any other context. It's hard to say like why somebody would just randomly do that. And I mean, unless somebody has done something to you, typically you don't just end a friendship or I mean, if you don't have anything in common, but it sounds like he likes you or he wants to be your friend so I I don't know what that's about I think that your approach and I, I really respect that you said you know I want to be there for him even though I was upset even though he's doing this to me I I still can empathize with him not having friends and maybe he you know might need the support if it's affecting your mental health and you are feeling depressed over this or it's just causing you to feel any sort of negativity towards yourself this person is not a friend to you and you owe them nothing of course you know helping somebody out or giving something you know somebody something every so often if you feel that you are in a headspace to do so or you feel that it's the right thing to do, do it. But if you're doing something and you feel that they're using you or you're not getting the same respect back, this person doesn't deserve to be in your life. This person is not somebody that you owe which is ironic because his name was Owen. You don't owe him anything. And until he can show you what a friend looks like, um I wouldn't, I wouldn't waste your time with this person. All right, next one. So I'm in a musical for my high school, right? And roughly about three or four weeks ago, my mom had bought me and herself Billie Eilish concert tickets when Billie would be performing in LA. But one week ago, I got confirmation that the opening night for the musical would be April 6th and the closing night would be the 9th, the day of the Billie Eilish concert. So like now I'm really conflicted on trying to convince the director if he could make the showtime for closing night early enough so it ends before around seven o'clock or if I should just not go to the closing night and not perform or if I should go to the closing night and make it a last minute to the concert. But oh my gosh, decisions, am I right? Rant over. I think, you know, unless you're constantly bailing on this or unless you're constantly letting your team down for the musical, I think it's okay to 
especially since you have communicated this to your to your team that you have this event and you'd really like to go i love that you were trying to kind of work around it and give you know different options part of me wants to say like obviously you've made a commitment to this musical the other part of me says that this is a billy eilish concert with your mom and it's okay to do things for yourself it's okay to let people down if that was the case to do things for yourself every so often especially if this is like a big thing that doesn't always come often and it looks like your mom bought the ticket so it's not like you were purposefully going out and you know just neglecting this musical it sounds like it was probably just an accident one of those things where there was a conflict of of time and things like that so i really hope you got to go to the billy eilish concert and there wasn't any sort of drama that came in, in drama because you know musical okay i know i'm a very sensitive person but i'm also just so annoyed with my family being needlessly mean i have a lot of distance between myself and them now due to their behavior and it hasn't gotten to the point where i feel like it's time to fully cut them out yet but the little casual digs are so aggravating and they make me feel crazy like am i really getting upset about a comment on my hair yes i am because it's constant and feels like high school digs to chip at my self-esteem sometimes and it doesn't even feel on purpose it it comes across as though that is just their natural response to a situation, which gives the impression they are not just kind people and whenever I say anything, they tease me for being so sensitive and how they can never say anything around me. It genuinely feels so high school and I just don't understand people like that. There is love there, but the constant picking drives me bananas. I'm really glad you shared this story because I think this is something that a lot of people struggle with and a lot of people, especially with their families. And it's so hard with family because you grew up around it. It's kind of what shaped you it's like almost all you know right and then when you get a glimpse of maybe the outside world and maybe you become your own self and you realize hey this is really impacting me and this particular person who I love and who raised me and who I grew up around is causing me to feel negative about myself and feel some type of way that I don't like and it's never easy to cut someone out of your life especially when it's family so I completely hear you and understand that you know you you aren't cutting these people out but it's still impacting your mental health and I like that you you made the point here where people you know they question like wow I, I can't joke around you or are you really upset about that and that is so unfair to you because if you are telling somebody if you're being honest and upfront and saying like hey I don't like that that's not okay with me you're setting boundaries and for them to not respect those boundaries that's not your fault but it's also completely unfair to you and a lot of the times people who are mean to other people and pick on other people like that are considered bullies it may not be to that extent but a lot of times we know about bullies is that they are struggling with insecurities within themselves and they take it out on other people especially people who have something they don't have or are out living their life and they're happy and the person who's bullying them can't do those things or they don't have that security but you are clearly a very resilient person and I completely respect the boundaries that you have set up I don't know if you see a counselor or anything like that but sometimes they can also help you determine set and maintain these boundaries and kind of what to do as a response so if you are in a situation where maybe a family member you feel is bullying you or just treating you like how you sh feel you shouldn't be treated or don't want to be treated. If you have any advice or any experience with this, please feel free to share. Next one. My best friend likes the guy that I'm interested in and I don't know what to do. It's been so frustrating because she knows I found out but ignores the fact that I know. She has also become very toxic ever since I found out and I honestly don't know what to do. Okay, so here's another situation that involves friends and significant others. Although it doesn't look like either of you are actually with this person. It looks like you're just... You you both have a, a, an interest in them. Okay, you know, I don't know the other the other side of things, but from this perspective, it sounds like your friend is seeing you as a competition or your friend is now seeing you as somebody she needs to go against or maybe put down because I'm not really sure what is happening that you have considered toxic because it could be a, a huge range of things. And I'm wondering if the reason that she has kind of twisted her behavior or changed her behavior is because she She's just not really respecting the fact that you guys have a similar interest in this person and it's not just a crush, maybe. You know, it, it's more like now it's me against her. I think that that says a lot more about her than maybe you wanted to know because this is almost like a friendship test. You know, this is such a common situation. We see it in movies. 
we see it in real life. Okay, this this is a very common situation where a boy or a girl or just a love interest comes in between friends. If it gets nasty, it doesn't sound like this person was your friend to begin with. And maybe you guys had a long history of friendship. Maybe she was great. Is it a she? I feel bad saying she. Okay, I'm sorry. There was no um, indication that this was a female. So I'm sorry for assuming that. The gender of this person, my bad. I'll try and keep it neutral. If you're not able to maybe have a constructive conversation about the situation, this person doesn't really sound like they're bringing too much positivity to your life. Especially if this isn't even somebody that either of you have history with. Maybe you should both sit down and ask yourselves, is this toxicity? that we're experiencing is this weird little like headbutt that we're having is this even worth it you know maybe we had this history of friendship that is going to get ruined because of it if your friend is willing to do so or maybe just by yourself really evaluate if if this is worth it if this person is worth it if your friend is worth it if this friendship is worth it and if you have any advice please leave it please leave it below. All right, let's do one more. I am reading these in the order that they came in. So again, if I didn't get to yours, it's still in chronological order from the timestamp of when they came in. So I struggle with major depressive disorder and right now I'm stuck in a depressive episode. I'm trying to make it to Thursday. I set goals of days I want to make it to each week. My parents keep harping on me to do things to help my future. Like bro, right now, Thursday is my future. I don't see a future for myself either. So that doesn't help much. Okay. Okay, so I want to first say that I think it's really, really cool that you are setting setting goals for yourself to make it through the week because sometimes when I wake up in the morning, I'm just like, how am I gonna even get through today? Because I know today is going to follow with tomorrow, which is gonna follow with Wednesday, which is gonna be Thursday. And it's just a lot to take on, especially when you're already dealing with so many things. So I think it's really amazing that you set goals for yourself and you're gonna say, I just need to get through this day. I just need to get to this day. And then once you get there, you set your goal again in going through something like this and feeling so low and feeling so depressed, especially I know you said that you're currently in an episode and not really feeling like you're maybe getting support from your parents and they're almost adding on to it makes it so much harder and it makes it so much more like, oh my God, how am I supposed to do this? But something I wanna point out to you is that you are still here and you have made the decision to keep going. And that is not an easy decision, especially when you're feeling this way. So there's something inside of you that is very strong and it is pushing forward, whether you kind of are aware of it or not, you're still pushing and working every single day. And that's exhausting, let me tell you. And I don't have to tell you because I know you know that it's exhausting. And to be able to get out of bed every day when you're so exhausted is an accomplishment. And I'm so proud of you for doing that. In working, on this crisis hotline, I spoke to a lot of people in very similar situations that ex described very similar things to me. And something that I would do to help them is to come up with a safety plan. And what that is, is you basically, you can even write it out so it's totally official. You don't have to show anybody if you don't want to. You can show whoever you want if you want to. I actually might even leave um, a copy of like a link to how to fill this out. You're gonna wanna write your reasons for living. What is keeping you here? Is it your cat? Is it your goldfish? Is it the fact that you know you're gonna make it till Thursday and then after that you're gonna keep setting goals? What is it that has caused you to wanna stay here? Because that is something that you are going to hold on to. That is your lifeline. After that, you're gonna start writing out things that in the past when you felt this way, what got you through it? Because if you're here, this means that you've done this before. You can do it and it might feel harder this time. It might feel a little bit different this time. But the fact of the matter is you've done this before and that is so incredible of you. So what got you through that before? You know, maybe going for a walk, putting on music and not listening to anybody. Maybe it was a podcast you enjoy listening to or maybe you just enjoy throwing sticks into the woods. I don't know, it doesn't matter what it is. It's something that has gotten your mind off of things and just brought you a little bit of relief. After that, you might also want to write down a list of people that you feel safe around or people that you feel like you can reach out to. This doesn't necessarily have to be a friend, a family member, it doesn't have to be counselor. You can call the NSPL, which I'm going to put the acronym for it down here because if I say the word, I feel like YouTube is gonna flag this video. You can do the chat service online. It, who out there can 
can you talk to? And it doesn't have to be about your mental health. It's just somebody that you feel safe around, somebody that you trust. Who are the people that you can rely on? And finally, what is your plan if you feel like all of these steps don't work? What is something, your last resort that you can do? Is it calling 911? Is it confessing to your mom like, hey, I'm at this point, I need to do something? Um, contacting a counselor, what, whatever it is, what is your final resort on finding help? And just kind of having a plan already set and, and written out for you when you're feeling this way is sometimes helpful because you don't have to come up with it. You don't have to add this stress of, now I have to write out a safety plan. Now I have to think because as we know, sometimes when we're feeling this way, it's really hard to think, especially rationally. If you're ever in a situation where you feel like you can't be safe or that you are unsafe, please call 911, please call a parent or even go online and chat with somebody. Use all of your resources because you are so deserving of this life and you have pushed for so long and you've been strong for so long. It's okay to rely on other people for help. It's okay to feel this way. It's okay to wake up in the morning and be like, how am I gonna get through the day? Because you know what? When you do get through the day, when you do complete that goal, you've done something amazing. You've kept yourself going. And when you feel like you can't do it, that in itself is an accomplishment. So I appreciate you for, for expressing that, those feelings today, because I think a lot of people probably also feel that way. And there's absolutely no shame in counseling. There's no shame in reaching out for help. I was the one that people were reaching out to for help on this on this hotline. So it doesn't have to be necessarily just some scary person on the other end. It could be me, right? It could be someone like me. So you never know. You never know what's going to happen until you try. And you deserve just as much as the next person. And with that, I am going to end this video here. I hope that I hope that you were at least able to take something away from this if you didn't have your rant shared. And and I just want to give a big thank you to everybody who submitted their rant and allowed this video to be a thing. It's it's so cool that you guys are sharing just these personal details, but we can also keep it anonymous and people can talk about it and just share their advice or their experience or how they got through a situation that might be similar because we're all human. We all go through almost the same thing, but almost not. So you never know. And your advice or your help might be very significant to somebody who needs it. And this is just a friendly reminder that we are keeping the comment section positive. We aren't going to be criticizing people or bringing other people down because that's not the point of this. I will be deleting any comments that are along those lines. So this is people's mental health. These are people's real problems that we're dealing with and it's not fair for anybody to be judgmental of the situation. So if you wanna submit your rant, I'll go ahead and leave the email address to do so down there. Also, of course, if I did not get to your rant, that does not mean that I didn't think it was worthy. That doesn't mean anything. That just means that it'll probably be in the next video. So keep an eye out for that as well. And until then, I hope you guys stay safe and you have an amazing rest of your day. I appreciate all of you for being here and I'll see you next time. Bye.